What's up guys, it's Ben Strader from EFI University and today I'm gonna to show you why the perfect piston probably isn't round. Well, as you probably know, getting the right piston for the right engine application is all a matter of experience and combination and putting things together that we know works well. But at some point, somebody had to know what will work and what wouldn't. So depending on what you're trying to use your engine for, whether it's in a boat or a street car or a road racing car or a drag race car, you might find you want a different piston shape. So today I'm gonna to give you an example of what a drag racing piston probably needs in order to survive and work well. On my rack over here, I have a lot of different examples of pistons that we've used, we've tested, we've developed. But before we get to any of that, we need to understand what it is the piston's gotta do. First and foremost, the piston's gotta seal the combustion chamber so that the power that we wanna extract from the engine during combustion actually gets you know, sealed in there and pushes that piston down, which transfers the energy to the connecting rod, the crankshaft, and then hopefully out to the rear tires. So in a drag racing application, we don't get a lot of time to get the engine warmed up. In fact, a lot of professional engines will even pump chilled cold water through the engine block because that keeps the heads and the manifolds colder, which helps increase the air density and make more power. The problem is we also need good lubrication, so the oil needs to be warmed. What they'll typically do is warm the engine up in the pits, get the water and the oil temperature up to speed, up to temp, then they'll stop and pump cold water through the engine. Now my oil's over here in the dry sump oil tank or at the bottom of the sump in your oil pan, so it's not getting cooled off. Now we have a situation where we go up to the starting line where we have warm oil, but a cold engine. The cylinders are cold, the heads are cold, and my piston's cold. Now, when you fire that engine up in the, in the burnout box, we need our engine to be round so that it seals the cylinder. But we also need the piston to be lightweight and stiff and strong. So one of the ways that modern piston manufacturers make the pistons lightweight and strong is by changing the designs of the skirt. Now, if you're unfamiliar, the skirt is the part that hangs down below the crown of the piston and stabilizes us in the bore. But in a drag race engine, we want to eliminate weight and we want to eliminate friction and drag. So instead of having a skirt that goes all the way around the piston, what we'd call a fully round skirt in a traditional piston, we now have a slipper skirt design like this with small skirts where the thrust load of the piston as it's going back and forth and going up and down the engine is taking all that force, but there's not a lot of drag here on the sides. Then the support structures that connect the pin boss or the towers here to the skirt are mounted instead of out here around the outside, they're mounted on the inboard. So this is what we would call an inboard box design piston. It offers a lot of advantages because it's lightweight and very stiff and strong. But for a drag racing application, it can also offer some disadvantages. Remember that all of the heat that's affecting my piston is being generated up here on the top in the crown. And that means the heat's gonna go from the crown and be absorbed into the rest of the piston. So on the sides where there's skirts, there's a lot of aluminum mass here to generate uh, an area for that, that heat to go into. But on the bottom of my piston on the sides, you notice that, well, there's not a lot of mass. And so what's happening is the piston grows at a different rate in the pin direction than it does in the thrust direction. So over time in development, we've been able to learn just about how much that piston will grow in the amount of time that we need to use it. So imagine I pull up to the burnout box, I start up my cold engine, I rev it up and dump the clutch, go through the gears and get the tires all hot. We stage up at the Christmas tree, the light turns green, we go. Now, for the next five or 10 seconds or so, however long your drag race lasts, it's maximum heat being generated on top of the piston, and we need it to seal the combustion chamber, but the only way it's gonna do that is if the piston gets round in a hurry. So if I started with a skirt that was all round, and it moved faster in this direction than it did in this direction, my piston would immediately go to being out of round and having less sealing as we go down the track. So what we've done is we've developed a piston shape that is absolutely not round. So on our piston testing fixture here that we have, we can measure the diameter of a piston skirt to one ten thousandth of an inch. So we use a gauge here that gets us started. This one happens to be a four inch ring gauge. We use that to zero our micrometer here, and we can go in and sort of get our fixture set. And then we can take our real piston and measure at different locations and figure out 
how round the piston is, how, what the curvature is, the radius, that sort of stuff. But if I flip it over and I measure the top of the piston, a couple of things you're going to notice. First of all, when I buy pistons from the, any manufacturer, whether whichever one you like, you'll get a little card in the box and it'll say, we recommend that the clearance between the piston skirt and the wall is X. 5,000, 6,000, 7, 2, 3, whatever the number is. But here's what's important. They tell you a gauge point where you're supposed to measure on the skirt, how high from the bottom of the skirt up they want you to measure. So when we put this in our gauge, we have a micrometer here that we can run it up or down to make sure that we're measuring on the right part of the skirt, right? Okay, well why would they care where you measure it on the skirt? That's because if you flip it this way, that's not a straight line. There's actually a barrel and a taper curvature here on the skirt that's designed to limit the amount of friction this high-speed drag racing piston actually has. So this entire skirt doesn't actually touch the cylinder wall, only a small football-sized portion of it actually does. If we were to take a measurement here at the gauge point and then another measurement farther up, what you would find with this piston is it gets smaller the higher we go. In this particular piston, the distance between the skirt dimension and the second ring land is about 17 or 18 thousandths of an inch. The distance between the skirt and the top ring land is about 32 thousandths of an inch. So it's a big taper where it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And that's because, again, the heat happens on top of the piston. So the top of the piston is going to swell a lot faster than the bottom of the piston. So we got to start out with it sort of tapered like this so that as it grows, it expands and it becomes round. The trick is how much. If we make it too much, the piston never gets up to shape and never seals the combustion chamber. If we make not enough, it grows too fast and it gets stuck and galled in the chamber and then we've got a mess. So it took a lot of trial and error and measurement and experimentation through our engine development program here at EFI University to get these numbers. But now that we have it set, we can actually go in and determine, is my piston round? Should it be round? Is it straight? Is it not straight? And so now that we have those shapes correct, we can start working on the crown. Oftentimes, we want to maximize the compression ratio for the engine. So what you would do is you'd have this dome here that takes up some of the volume in the combustion chamber. Well, how much can you have? How do I know if I have enough that it's going to clear the cylinder head? The way that we normally start out with that is we take our cylinder head here and we bolt it on the engine and we flip the engine upside down. Then what we do is we take epoxy in liquid and we pour it into the engine so that it makes a physical mold. Once it's dry, we take this out and now we have an exact replica of the combustion chamber that we have several here you can see of different shapes and sizes and configuration from different engines we've worked on. We take a 3D scanner, we make a digitized image of that chamber, then we can go to the CNC mill and we can mill it out. They'll send back typically a mock-up or a dummy piston that we can then put in our engine. So here's a good example of a dummy mock-up piston. There's not a lot of finished machine work done on it. It's the right size, the right taper, the right all that. And we can go in there and check the pocket depths that we need for piston to valve clearance. We can make any changes. Let me show you a real life example of that. So here's one we got. We tested it all out, and on this one you can see, uh-oh, I went in there and I had to do some grinding. That's because even though we had enough depth to clear the valve, we didn't have enough radial clearance here. So we just went in by hand and we ground it, got what we wanted to fit, sent this back to the piston manufacturer, they make a new scan, we get the piston, pistons right on the very first try. We can stick them in the engine, go straight to the dyno and run them, and know we're not going to have any problems. So there's a lot that goes on inside making the right piston for the engine and getting it just right, but at the end of the day, you probably didn't know that your pistons don't always have to be round. <laughs>